Dusk settled over the rolling hills of Napa Valley, painting the sky in bruised shades of purple and gold. Samantha Ray guided her rental car down the winding road, hands tight on the wheel. The radio crackled, a melancholy tune swelling through the static. Ten years. A decade since she'd last set foot in this place. The place she once called home. Before tragedy shattered her world like a bottle against stone. Samantha swallowed hard, the familiar burn of grief and anger rising in her throat. Her uncle's vineyard loomed ahead, gnarled vines stretching into the gathering gloom. A kingdom built on secrets and lies. And now, it was hers. The lawyer's words echoed in her head, cold and impersonal. In the event of my death, I bequeath Ravenswood Vineyard to my niece, Samantha Ray. Her uncle's final message from beyond the grave. A twisted inheritance she never wanted. Gravel crunched beneath her tires as she pulled to a stop before the weathered manor house. The engine ticked, the only sound in the oppressive stillness. Samantha sat, staring up at the dark windows, the sagging portico. Once, this place had been filled with laughter. The warm chaos of family. Her mother's smile, her father's booming voice. Summers spent exploring the sun-drenched rows of vines, purple-stained fingers plucking grapes, warmed by the golden light. Before the accident. Before everything changed. Samantha was twelve when her parents' car veered off the road, plummeting into the inky depths of the nearby reservoir. The screech of metal, the shatter of glass, the sirens and flashing lights. The shattered look on her uncle's face as he pulled her close, whispered that mommy and daddy had gone to heaven. But even then, through the haze of shock and sorrow, something nagged at Samantha. A splinter of doubt, burrowing deep. Her father was a careful driver. Her mother always insisted on seat belts. So how had they crashed on that arrow-straight stretch of road? Questions met with tight smiles and placating words. A tragic accident, the adults murmured. No one to blame. But blame festered in Samantha's heart, a poison she couldn't purge. It seeped into every crack of her fractured world as her uncle retreated into the vineyard, her aunt Olivia donning black like armor. And Celia, her stepsister, watching with those cold, calculating eyes. A viper coiled in the garden. Samantha escaped as soon as she could, fleeing to the far coast, burying herself in books, in wine, building a new life from the ashes of the old. A rising star in the sommelier world, her palate praised, her instincts unrivaled. But she could never outrun the past. It lingered in every wine she sipped, every cork she pulled, the bittersweet notes of family and loss. And now, with an ink-scratched signature, her uncle had dragged her back, thrust her into this viper's nest, this mausoleum of memory. Stealing herself, Samantha pushed open the car door. The scent of ripening grapes and rich earth enveloped her, heady and achingly familiar. Crickets sang in the deepening dusk, a bittersweet symphony. Leaves crunched beneath her feet as she made her way up the crumbling steps. The porch swing creaked in the breeze, a ghostly sigh. How many nights had she curled there with a book, lulled by the wind in the vines? Before the dark descended, before innocence was lost. Jaw clenched, Samantha tried the door. It swung open with a groan, hinges protesting. The foyer yawned before her, shadows thick as cobwebs. She fumbled for a light switch, breath shallow in her chest. A click, a buzz. Weak light flickered overhead, illuminating faded elegance. Peeling wallpaper, threadbare runners. The once grand staircase curved into darkness, a looming specter. Hello? Samantha called, her voice swallowed by the gloom. Silence pressed back, dense and watchful. She fought the urge to turn tail and run, to leave this place and its ghosts behind. But the vineyard was her burden now. Her penance. For not seeing the serpents in the garden. For not saving those she loved from the viper's bite. Pulse hammering, Samantha ventured deeper into the house. Each room held a memory, a phantom pain. The kitchen where her mother baked blackberry pies, the parlor where her father spun tales by the fire. 
Snapshots of a life cut short. A Hamley shattered. She climbed the groaning stairs, hand skimming the worn banister. Childhood echoes chased her steps. The creak of floorboards, the whisper of long skirts. The sharp scent of her aunt's perfume, cloying as rotted fruit. At the end of the hall, a door stood ajar. Her uncle's study. Hard in her throat, Samantha pushed it open. The room was a tomb, thick with dust and shadows. Books lined the walls, leather cracked, and spines faded. A great oak desk commanded the space, surface strewn with yellowed papers. And there, in a shaft of dying light, a portrait. Her parents on their wedding day, faces alight with joy and promise. Beside them, her uncle and Olivia Dati. A perfect family tableau. But perfection was a cunning veil hiding rot beneath. Samantha knew that now. Too little, too late. Fingers trembling, she brushed the dust from the frame. Traced the familiar lines of her father's face, her mother's smile. Aching for the comfort of their arms, the surety of their love. But the dead offered no solace. Only cold glass and the cruel march of time. Olivia's face seemed to mock her from the portrait. That secret smile, those hooded eyes. A woman wreathed in black even then, mourning her living husband, coveting his lands, his power. And Celia, a porcelain doll clutched in her hands. Samantha's replacement, the cuckoo in the nest. Poor orphaned lamb, Olivia crooned as she brushed Celia's golden curls. Such a tragic past. But tragedy clung to Celia like a perfume, sweet as poisoned wine. She moved through their shattered lives like a wraith, a thief of joy, Olivia's perfect daughter. Samantha's hands curled into fists, nails biting into her palms. The shards of the past sliced deep, drawing fresh blood. But she would not flinch. Not this time. She had a duty now. To the vineyard, to the family name. To the truth long buried, the secrets left to rot on the vine. Ravenswood was her birthright, her burden, and she would not rest until she unearthed every twisted root, every poisoned seed, even if it meant facing the vipers head on, even if it destroyed her in the end. For in the whispers of the vineyard, Samantha heard a siren's call, a threnody of truth and retribution, and she would follow it into the dark thorns be damned. Samantha stood amidst the ruins of her family's legacy, the weight of generations pressing down upon her. The vineyard stretched out before her, once lush vines now gnarled and overgrown, choked by weeds and neglect. She rolled up her sleeves, determination etched into every line of her face. She would rebuild, resurrect, dot, and in doing so, perhaps she could piece together the shattered fragments of her own broken past. As the sun climbed high into the cloudless sky, Samantha lost herself in the work. Pruning, tilling, coaxing life from the stubborn earth. Sweat beaded on her brow, muscles burning with each passing hour. But it was a welcome pain, a penance long overdue. In the distance, a figure appeared. Tall, broad-shouldered, striding through the rows with purposeful grace. Samantha straightened shading her eyes against the glare. The man drew closer, features sharpening into focus. Chiseled jaw, eyes the color of aged whiskey. A face she knew, a name that tugged at the edges of memory. Samantha Ray, he called, a slow smile curving his lips. As I live and breathe. Recognition clicked into place. Jackson Devereaux.ac. The wine critic. He sketched a mock bow. In the flesh. And may I say, you look ravishing knee deep in dirt and sweat. Rustic chic suits you. Samantha quirked a brow. And you look suspiciously like a man with an agenda. What brings you to my humble abode? Can an old friend stop by to offer his condolences? Jackson clasped a hand to his heart. I heard about your uncle's passing. My sympathies. Samantha's mouth tightened. Old friend indeed. She and Jackson had a history, one etched in stolen glances and simmering tension. A dance of wits and wills, circling ever closer to the flame. They'd met years ago, at a wine-tasting in Sonoma. 
he was already making a name for himself. His palate renowned, his critiques as intoxicating as the vintages he swirled. She was still finding her footing, determined to prove herself in a cutthroat world. He'd singled her out, drawn to her keen insights and quick tongue. They traded barbs and bon mots, an exhilarating volley that left her flushed and breathless. An invitation to dinner, a moonlit walk through the vineyards, and then a kiss. Deep, consuming, the kind that branded bone and made the blood sing. The promise of more, of everything, hanging ripe between them. But the past had a way of tightening its thorny grip, and Samantha fled before the roots could take hold. She'd seen how easily love could turn to loss, how quickly passion could sour into pain. And Jackson Devereaux, with his charm and his secrets, was a risk she couldn't afford to take. Now, standing amidst the detritus of her legacy, Samantha felt the old pull, the magnetic force that drew her to him even as every instinct screamed to run. Condolences are a bit late. Samantha dusted off her hands, straightening to her full height. My uncle's been in the ground a week. But then, you always did have a flair for dramatic timing. Jackson's eyes crinkled at the corners, warm with remembered intimacy. You wound me, Samantha. And here I thought you'd be thrilled by the prospect of my charming company. Thrilled is a strong word, Samantha said dryly. Wary, perhaps. Resigned. <laughs> I'll take it. Jackson fell into step beside her as she moved down the row, surveying the work ahead. Truth be told, I'm here on business. Word is Ravenswood is under new management. I wanted to see for myself. Samantha shot him a sidelong glance. And offer your expert opinion, no doubt. My opinion, for what it's worth, is that you've got one hell of a challenge ahead of you. Jackson's gaze swept over the tangled vines, the crumbling trellises. This place has good bones, but it's going to take more than a little elbow grease to bring it back to life. Lucky for me, I've never been afraid of a little hard work. Samantha's jaw set, a muscle ticking in her cheek. Ravenswood is my birthright. My cross to bear. I'll do whatever it takes. A shadow flickered across Jackson's face, there and gone in a heartbeat. Be careful, Samantha. Some ghosts are better left undisturbed. Before she could ask what he meant, a voice shattered the stillness. Samantha, darling. I thought I heard your dulcet tones. Samantha stiffened, ice sliding down her spine. She turned, already knowing what she would find. Olivia stood at the edge of the vineyard, a vision in crisp white linen and oversized sunglasses. Celia hovered at her elbow, a perfect porcelain doll in ruffled silk. Aunt Olivia, dot. Samantha forced a smile, the muscles of her face aching with the effort. I didn't expect to see you so soon. And miss the grand return of the prodigal niece? Olivia glided forward, arms outstretched. Never. Let me look at you. Stealing herself, Samantha submitted to Olivia's embrace. Chanel and bitter secrets clinging like a second skin. You've been busy, I see. Olivia cast a critical eye over the vineyard, mouth pursed. Though I fear you're rather like Sisyphus, pushing that boulder up a mountain. A futile effort in the inn? Futile or not, it's my effort to make. Samantha bit back the acid on her tongue, the bitterness that welled up in her chest. Uncle Alistair left Ravenswood to me. I intend to honor that. Celia tittered, the sound grating. Honor? Dine. Please. Alistair was a doddering old fool. And you're just a little girl playing at Vintner. Now, Celia. Olivia laid a quelling hand on her daughter's arm. Let's not be unkind. I'm sure Samantha will do her very best. Bless her heart. The condescension dripped like venom, sweet and cloying. Samantha's hands curled into fists, nails gouging crescents into her palms. But before she could unleash the flood of vitriol building in her throat, Jackson stepped smoothly into the breach. Pardon my interruption, ladies. He flashed a megawatt smile, all matinee idol charm. Jackson Devereaux, wine critic extraordinaire. I was just telling Samantha what an extraordinary opportunity she has here. 
Ravenswood is a diamond in the rough. With the right touch, it could be a crown jewel once more. Olivia's gaze sharpened, a viper scenting prey. Careful, Mr. Devereux. Flattery is a dangerous vintage. It goes straight to a girl's head. Flattery, no. A admiration, perhaps. Jackson held Samantha's eyes, a moment of perfect understanding passing between them. And respect, Dai. No small thing in this business or this world. The silence stretched, knife-edged and humming with tension. Olivia's smile never wavered, but Samantha saw the poison simmering beneath. The wrath, barely contained. Well? Meanwhile? Olivia adjusted her sunglasses, a dismissive flick of her wrist. We mustn't overstay our welcome. Celia. Celia's lips curled, a petulant pout. But at her mother's gimlet stare, she fell into line, heels sinking into the damp earth as they moved toward the waiting car. We'll be seeing you, Samantha. Olivia's parting shot drifted back on the breeze, silken menace wrapped in propriety. Do take care. Samantha watched them go, bile rising in her throat. A tremor gripped her hands. She clenched them tight, willing the weakness away. So, Jackson slid his hands into his pockets, rocking back on his heels. That's the infamous Olivia. Charming woman. Like a viper. Samantha expelled a shuddering breath. All smiles and solicitude, right until she bares her fangs. For a moment, the only sound was the whistle of the wind through the leaves, the creak of old wood and older secrets. She killed them, you know. The words tumbled from Samantha's lips, scraped, raw dot a. My parents. Oh, not with her own hands. But she cut their brake lines as surely as if she'd held the knife. Jackson went still. You're certain of this? No. Samantha closed her eyes, grief and impotent fury warring in her chest. But I feel it. In my bones, my blood. She wanted my father's land, his money. And she'd stop at nothing to get it. When she opened her eyes, Jackson was watching her. Sorrow and something fiercer, something achingly tender burned in his amber gaze. Gently, so gently, he reached out, brushed a smudge of dirt from her cheek. His touch scorched, lightning in her veins. Then we'll find the truth. A vow, ironclad and unbreakable. Together whatever it takes. Samantha's breath caught. She swayed into him, drawn by a force beyond reckoning. A recognition, soul-deep and undeniable. In the golden light of the dying day, amidst the ruins of her past, Samantha kissed him. A kiss to seal a promise, to forge a future. Jackson's arms came around her, strong and sure. He tasted of ripe berries and spice of hope and absolution. They sank to the sun-warmed earth, limbs tangling, hearts thundering in syncopated rhythm, skin to skin, breath mingling, sweet as nectar. In the shattered pieces of herself, Samantha found a strange and sudden wholeness. A North Star fixed and true. She poured years of longing into fevered caresses, jagged whispers, words she'd never dared to shape, feelings locked too long in the marrow. Jackson worshipped her with hands and lips and tongue, exalted her, cherished her. In the haven of his arms, she was seen, known, profoundly, irrevocably loved. And for one blinding, incandescent moment, the darkness fled. The ghosts quieted their hungry howls. There was only this, the truth of what they were. What they could be. What they would fight for. Come what may. Far away, in the depths of her family home, Olivia stared into the gilt-edged mirror. Her reflection gazed back, pale and poisonous in the guttering light. Olivia's mind wandered, slipping through the mists of time. Back to the days when she'd first set foot on this accursed soil, an eager young bride, drunk on dreams of status and glory. Alistair had seemed a prize beyond measure then. Scion of a great house, master of a kingdom of grapes and gold. She'd preened and simpered, played the coquette, 
until the ring was on her finger, the vows thick upon her tongue. Too late, she learned the truth. The rot at the heart of Ravenswood, the curses carved in blood and bone. Alistair's first wife, dead in childbirth, a specter that haunted every corner. His love for Samantha's mother, a candle that never quite guttered out. Olivia had raged then, wept and railed against the injustice of it, that she should be second best, runner-up, in her own home. But she'd learned, oh yes, learned to smile and nod and simper, even as she plotted, even as she planned. One by one, she'd cleared the board. Alistair's son dispatched to a distant boarding school never to return. Samantha's parents, an unfortunate accident on a rain-slick road. Each death, a notch on her belt, a step closer to the prize. But Alistair, old fool that he was, had clung to life. Clung to his precious niece, the last link to a past Olivia, would see ground to dust. So she bided her time tightened her coils around Celia, molded her in her own serpentine image. Together, they would hold dominion. Together, they would rise. And now, with Alistair Cole in the ground and Samantha foundering in her futile quest, triumph was close. So close she could taste it, thick and copper bright upon her tongue. Let the girl play at detective, at vindication. Let her scrabble in the dirt for scraps of truth. Olivia held the power, the keys to the kingdom, and she would not rest until Ravenswood was hers, until the last of Alistair's wretched bloodline was wiped from the earth. In the mirror, her eyes gleamed, black and fathomless as the abyss. The reckoning was coming. And Samantha, dear sweet, stubborn Samantha, well, well, she would learn, as Olivia had learned. In the game of crowns and corpses, mercy was for fools. And Olivia was no one's fool. Dawn crept over the horizon, painting the sky in shades of fire and blood. Samantha stood amidst the vines, a silent sentinel as the world awakened around her. In the days since her encounter with Jackson, since that searing soul-deep connection, she'd worked tirelessly. Poring over old records, chasing down leads, piecing together the jagged shards of her family's history. And with each new discovery, each damning piece of evidence, the truth had taken shape. Dark and twisted, a gnarled root strangling the heart of Ravenswood. Olivia. Wide. Always Olivia, the spider at the center of the web. Samantha's hand tightened on the folder she held, knuckles white. Proof of embezzlement, of fraud of a life insurance policy taken out on her father days before his death, funneling into offshore accounts. The nail in a coffin long sealed. A crunch of gravel, a whisper of movement. Samantha turned to find Jackson approaching, two mugs of steaming coffee in hand. Gratitude and something infinitely tender welled in her chest. Hey, do. He held out a mug. Thought you could use this. And maybe a friendly face. Samantha accepted the coffee, cradling its warmth against her chest. You're up early. Couldn't sleep. Jackson's gaze searched hers. Big day. How are you holding up? Samantha exhaled, long and slow. Honestly? I'm terrified. But also, ready. It's time, Jackson. Time to end this. And we will. Together. Jackson laced his fingers with hers a steady anchor amidst the tempest. You're not alone, Samantha. Not anymore. She leaned into him, drawing strength from the solid, reassuring breath of him. For a long moment, they simply breathed, in tandem, in perfect synchrony. Then Samantha squared her shoulders, resolve kindling in her bones. Let's finish this. They found Olivia in the great room, a queen holding court. She reclined on a chaise lounge skin like parchment, eyes like chips of ice. Celia perched at her side, a vulture waiting for the carrion. Samantha, dot. Olivia's voice was a silken purr. To what do we owe this pleasure? Samantha stepped forward, head high, back, ramrod, straight. The folder in her hand was a talisman, a shield against the venom poised to strike. It's over, Olivia, Ty. Each word fell like a hammer blow 
ringing in the cavernous space. I know what you did. I have proof. A ripple of tension, a frisson of unease. Olivia's gaze sharpened, serpentine. Proof of what, exactly? Really, Samantha? Such dramatics. Proof that you killed my parents. Samantha's voice never wavered, hard and clear as cut crystal. That you've been embezzling from Ravenswood for years. Bleeding it dry to line your own pockets. Lies. Celia surged to her feet, a flush rising on her porcelain cheeks. How dare you spew such filth? The only filth here is the two of you. Samantha threw the folder down like a gauntlet, papers scattering across the polished floor. Bank records. Emails. Transcripts from the board meetings where you strong-armed them into silence. It's all there, Olivia. Laid bare for the world to see. For a long, fraught moment, no one moved. No one breathed. Then Olivia began to laugh. A low, mocking chuckle that built into a full-throated roar. Oh, you stupid, stupid girl. Olivia rose, each movement tight with menace. You think you've won? You think your paltry scrap of evidence will change anything? She kicked at the papers, lips curled in a sneer. I am Ravenswood. It's lifeblood. It's beating heart. And you, you're nothing. A mewling child grasping for a crown you could never hope to wear. You're wrong. Samantha's words lashed out like a whip. Ravenswood is more than you. More than your poison, your lies. It's my legacy, my birthright. Stewarded by my parents, my uncle. And now, me. Samantha advanced. Each step a war drum, a call to arms. You took them from me. Stole my family, my future. But no more. Your reign ends now. Olivia bared her teeth, a cornered animal scenting blood. I made this place. I saved it from ruin while your precious parents wept and drank and drove themselves into the ground. They were weak, useless. I did what needed to be done. You did what you wanted to do. Samantha's shout shook the rafters. Lied and murdered your way to power. Ground your heel into anyone who stood in your way. But it was all for nothing, Olivia. Nothing. You're just like your mother, Olivia hissed. A blind, stubborn little fool. I should have snuffed you out years ago. But you didn't. And that was your one mistake. Steely resolve, implacable and unbreakable, gripped Samantha's heart. I'm not a little girl anymore. I see you now. I see what you are. And I cast you out. Olivia reeled back as if struck. You can't, uh, I can. And I have. Samantha turned to Jackson, to the officers filing in behind him. Get them out of here. Ravenswood is mine. As the police swarmed forward, cuffing a shrieking Celia, a coldly silent Olivia, Samantha felt the world tilt on its axis. A great shuddering sigh seemed to go through the house, the land. At long last, the scales fell from her eyes. The chains binding her heart slipped free. The ghosts of her past settled, contented, their long sorrow eased. In their place, bright and clear and achingly fierce, hope. Hot as the sun on her cheeks, sweet as the grapes ripening on the vine. Jackson's hand found hers, solid and sure. You did it, he murmured, quiet awe suffusing every syllable. You saved Ravenswood. You saved yourself. Samantha turned to him, tears washing clean her battle-drawn features. We did it. Together. They came together like magnets, like gravity. Two stars collapsing into a single, perfect whole. The kiss was a vow, a commitment. One fraught with joy and promise. A new beginning. For her. For them. For Ravenswood. Bathed in the golden light of dawn, the last heirs to an embattled kingdom surveyed their domain. So much had been lost. So much still remained to be rebuilt. But they would do it. Brick by brick, vine by vine. Reclaiming the birthright that was always theirs. Healing the wounds. 
salving the scars, bringing light to darkness, hope to despair. In the house that had once echoed with secrets and lies, with the weeping of the lost, now rang with something sweeter, something true. Love, soft as a sigh, fierce as the summer sun, eternal as the turning of the earth, the wheeling of the stars. Samantha looked to the horizon, to the glorious sprawl of Ravenswood, and smiled. At long last, the harvest had come, and it tasted of solace, of vindication, of home, the end.